It's more than just a show. It's community. It's the Stillwater Morning Scramble with Steve Daniels on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Mayor Will Joyce joins us here on a Friday. And good morning. Uh, that was a good council meeting. We had a good council meeting. Kind of a long one this last week, but yeah, lots of good topics, lots of discussion. Didn't make it through all of it. I'll be <laughs> honest with you. Stillwater's Morning Scramble. That's more music than we normally have here. <laughs> it's kind of jamming along That's here. That's the mayor on the... Whatever kind of guitar that is. I don't know. So, good to see you. I haven't seen you. I, I, I told you I watched you on TV. Yeah. Mayor Will Joyce joins us here on a Friday. And, good morning. Uh, that was a good council meeting. We had a good council meeting. Kind of a long one this last week, but yeah, lots of good topics, lots of discussion. Didn't make it through all of it, I'll be <laughs> honest with you. But but um, Some of us don't have that option, Steve. We have to be there the whole time. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> no, but it went well, and uh, you know, I, I love the progress that uh, we, we seem to be... Uh, starting to, to visualize stuff. Yeah. I'm excited about the, I'm still excited about the stage down here at Block 34. The, yeah. The time-wise, it sounds like that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's certainly, you know, we've got some some decent plans for that and and uh, are out talking to people in the community and, and different places to try to raise some funds for it. Uh, that that would be private money that would, that would go to, to build that. So um, the Block 34 Trust has been working hard to try to uh, raise those funds, and they've got some good designs. Yeah, I'd love to see what what they're what they're going to be able to do over there. And it's going to be privately funded. That's uh, yes. that's part of the the stuff yep. there. Yeah, absolutely. Or you could be a sponsor, I suppose. Have have the naming rights. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you if you are interested in having your name on anything over at Block Thirty Four, I'm sure they'd love to talk to you. Well, you know, when you think about that, it, it is a legacy. Sure. And and you do become a, a fabric of the community. Well, I mean, gosh, look at look at every public or private public private partnership or or most public park facilities that have been built anywhere i mean the gathering place in tulsa is absolutely entirely funded by uh private private donations uh the new scissor tail park in oklahoma city they're getting ready to open here in a couple months love you know, stepped up big, with that yeah, yeah the loves sponsored the big stage and the the gathering area so yeah i mean it, it's just how it works right because um municipal governments don't have uh, even the big cities in oklahoma sure. city and tulsa just don't have big pots of money to be able to spend on these kinds of things but they are necessary parts and i think you if you see the the amount of time and, and effort that cities like oklahoma city and tulsa and and smaller cities you see in in enid and in um you know other places around the state uh these are public amenities that the public wants that they provide economic benefit for the unit for the for the uh the city uh for the community as well and and uh you know it's it's worth trying to get out there and, and see what people are willing to do yeah you mentioned Enid. We have listeners in Enid. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with Shark Bridge? I'm not familiar with Shark Bridge. I wasn't really either, although I've heard that it, it's a it's a bridge that uh, wipes out trucks because it's a it, it hangs pretty low. Is this in Enid? Yeah. Oh, I know there's one. There's a real famous one somewhere in North Carolina that's like super low, and there's a video camera on it all the time, and it captures trucks I, getting. I, this one has a video camera. I've got to check too. that out because I I think that's always. I mean, it's got. 30,000 signs in front of it saying this is a low bridge and still it well, they even like have the shark week. stuff on it yeah <laughs> and anyway but i've never i don't think i've seen it it says and if we have some eating folks you can give me a call here but it's on east main okay and uh anyway they, it said it was out of i saw this on channel four this morning i give my this worse but they have over seven thousand followers on facebook the, that the watch bridge this does? bridge oh really <laughs> And then you see, you know, and, and they were showing a, a compilation of highlights of yeah, the bridge, you yeah. know, wiping out an Oriole truck, and yeah. and nobody hurt, hurt in these things, but it's very costly. Cause yeah, it takes the takes the top right off your trailer. If you but anyway, they need there. a sponsor. <laughs> I'm not sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you mentioned Eden, and I thought, well, we yeah, we'll go there anyway. <laughs> but but I back to the city stuff. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the gathering place before, mm -hmm. and somebody was on earlier this week, and we were talking about. Oh, I think with the chamber, they're going to bring in a, a spokesperson who yeah, today uh, is very much involved and has a history with the gathering place. Yeah, and we're all there, learning from that, aren't we? Yeah, I think it's a it's a great. I mean, it's gotten so much publicity all around the world, really. And I think National Geographic listed it as one of its best places, and you know, the world or something. I mean, some it's gotten a lot of of good attention. Uh, and it's been a, uh, you know, a pretty unique sort of thing because of the, you know, the fact that it was privately funded, um, and it's, you know, it's got an endowment so that, you know, the maintenance even is kept up by private funding. Um, you know, so it's not something that the city is going to have as a, a maintenance responsibility 30, 40 years from now. 
which is great. And, and, you know, the generosity of folks who have uh, contributed to that, um, you know, is, is fantastic. And, and the impact it has on its community is, you know, I mean, it, you can't, you can't miss the fact that it, you know, it's a huge impact on Tulsa. People, I know people from here, my family has sure. gone over to Tulsa just to go see it, right, and go play, and, and it's worth it, right? I mean, it, it is worth a drive over just to, to spend the day at the gathering place. So, um, you know, th- those kinds of projects are, again, I mean, it's more than just a park or more than just a playground for somebody to go play on. It's an economic development engine for the city. It's, it's uh, publicity for the city. It's, you know, that community can really rally around those kinds of things, and, and it becomes more than just a, a playground or a park, right? It, it is an, an identity, really, for, for Tulsa that, they can, that they'll have for, for years to come. And the work behind that, which I didn't even know was going to take place until whatever the last year or whenever mm-hmm. it's it become prominent, had to go back years yeah. because, I mean, with the parking situation and all those oh, things. Yeah. None of that happens quickly. Right. Yeah. I mean, it happens quicker when you've got the money. Right? When well, yeah. you've got somebody who said, here's uh, whatever, tens of millions of dollars that, that have been, were donated for that, um, you know, certainly helps. But, but yeah, I mean, you still have, I mean, that is a, a gigantic piece of land, tons of parking around it, all kinds of different facilities, right? They've got the, the boathouse, you know, where you can go rent kayaks and they've got restaurant and they've got, um, you know, all kinds of different playgrounds and that sort of thing. So, yeah, the planning... Uh, and you know the amount of of work that goes into to getting something like that off the ground goes back, I'm sure, a decade. And when you're talking fundraising, you know, we just had uh, he just stepped in and said hi, but Chef Jeff with TS Fork, yeah. And I know you, I think it was yesterday or the day before, uh, he was meeting with the with folks at Lake McMurtry because mm-hmm. he's helping with their fundraisers there. Excellent. And they're going to have, uh, I think, in in November, they're going to have steaks at the lakes. That's awesome. And so this is privately done, yeah. but it's all part of our. It's, external community really it's so cool to see that kind of thing where where different um you know institutions within the community partner up and, and get together and figure out ways to to collaborate to to do that sort of fundraising right i love to see the i know like freddy's i've been to freddy's on a monday night for westwood night right my kids go to westwood and they'll do a thing where you know a percentage of their profit from that night will get donated back to the school and so it gets people into the restaurant you know it raises money for the schools and and just seeing you know, a restaurant and a school or the lake and, and um, TS Fork or, you know, different, uh, you know, just you were talking this morning with Ivy about sponsorships from places like Kicker and the hospital. Absolutely, sort of yeah. For United Way. Um, you know, seeing the collaboration among all these different groups in the city it, is so cool because it, it one, it, you know, it, the entities are clearly understand that they need to give back and, you know, be a part of, of these uh, needed services, but also, um you know, you just see a you just see a common goal, right? And you see people who recognize that that these uh, that 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 the lake or that what United Way does, the day of caring, that they they benefit everybody in the community, right? It's such a it's a wide benefit. It's much bigger than just you know maybe the one uh, event that they're dealing with. It, the impact that that the, those fundraisers can have is is so great. So, um, you know, I don't know if you saw yesterday. I posted on Facebook about a, a State Farm grant. That uh, Councilor Jalowski. Well, you're one of the few because oh, you no, got no, a no, lot no, of play. No, 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 no. <laughs> I have seen it, and she's going to be on next Tuesday. Excellent. So I'm wrong. Perfect I, timing. I didn't know it was tied into the, to what Amy's been working on. Yeah, so she's she, going to be on Tuesday. Good. Well, because Wednesday voting opens on online for this State Farm grant uh, that would be provide twenty five thousand dollars for our playability project over at Strickland Park. Right, we're getting a whole new uh, set of playground equipment over there. Uh, Smack raised two hundred thousand dollars for that project. Uh, Maya's Promise, which uh, Amy is on the board of, um, you know, over four hundred thousand dollars total, I think, with a CBDG, CBDG grant that we're providing uh, from the city, um, and then State Farm would kick in another twenty five grand and help us create a, an accessible bathroom that's like climate controlled and all that sort of thing. So everybody who goes can play, right? And and seeing all those groups kind of come together. And recognize the impact of a project like this. I mean, this is uh, much smaller scale than something like the Gathering Place, but having a a, a playground that is uh, accessible to everyone, that's adaptive to to whoever wants to come play, and that provides uh, the kind of, of uh, facility that everyone in the community and from the surrounding communities can come to, uh, is such a is such an important thing for the city, and it's great to see everybody get involved. 
It's more than just a show. It's community. It's the Stillwater Morning Scramble with Steve Daniels on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network.